Hey everybody, welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show as we continue uh, my little series called Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture. Today I got somebody who does something with something that is a big part of pop culture. His name is John... Uh, I'm going to have you pronounce your your name. John... Uh, Grazi- Graziano. Graziano, okay. And you're an illustrator for the Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, comic. That's right. I'm <laughs> the only one that draws it. <laughs> and how the heck did that even start for you? Well, you know, it, it started when I was a kid, actually. Um... I went to visit the Ripley's Museum in St. Augustine, Florida with uh, my family on vacation, and I got to learn about Robert Ripley and who he was, and I got interested in it, and uh, I found out that they uh, actually, Ripley still produced uh, the daily comic strip, so I went took it upon myself to uh, research a couple of items that I thought were uh, weird-worthy. Sure. And uh, then I illustrated them, and I sent them to Ripley's headquarters, and uh, I got a nice letter back in the mail from them that they, they really liked what they saw. But um, then they forwarded that letter to their corporate headquarters, which at the time was in uh, Canada, and somebody there figured that this was from a kid, and they sent me another nice letter saying that I should uh, you know, perhaps continue my education to become professional one day. Sure. So that's what I did. Five years later, I applied for the job again. <laughs> <laughs> the time you finally got it. <laughs> that's what happens. The perseverance uh, pays off, I guess. That's the moral of the story. Uh, I wanted to draw the Ripley comic strip when I was a kid, and I got to do it, uh, you know, 25 years later after the fact. So, um, wow. and I've been doing it now. It's going to be going on 10 years. Uh, uh, this coming uh, March it'll be uh, next March it'll be ten years so I'll be drawing the uh, drawing the strip. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. And, and uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of your work that you've done, but I just saw kind of what you sent me the other day when we were chatting about doing an interview and stuff. Because I was kind of so blown away because I found you because your friends your friends with uh, I believe Eddie Deason on Facebook, and he oh, has yeah. a, he has a whole bunch mm-hmm. of, of friends. You know, and I've interviewed Eddie before, and he's a good, good pretty good guy. And I, I, I kind of been kind of going through the list and saying who could I get next that's doing something cool to interview, uh, especially that would relate to pop culture and and you doing that for Ripley's Believe It or Not that uh, that's a uh, that's pretty big I'd say. It's a uh, it, it's an iconic uh, strip. It's it's probably the longest running, uh, continuously running comic strip. Uh, it started in 1918. Did you think it was that old? No, yeah. I thought it'd be like maybe the 60s or 70s at least. Yeah, no, it started in 1918, and we're 95 years old uh, this year. So we're going to have our 100th anniversary in five years of Ripley's, uh, believe it or not. It's actually the comic strip is what started the whole entire company. So when you see Ripley's now, they have a lot of, uh, they have museums and they have aquariums, and, and it's actually... Uh, it's actually a, a pretty big uh, company now, and it was all started just based on a, a trip that roughly uh, started in 1918. Oh, geez, wow, that's 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 pretty cool. It has a lot of history with it. Like, uh, so, like, when you do a, an illustration, do you have to think of an idea of what to do, or does somebody kind of give you kind of a head start of if you want this is what you got to do? Okay, uh, it's it's pretty easy. Um, I, I have an editor and a research uh, department, um, Rip Publishing Division. We, you, you ever see those uh, those nice um, books that are out um, every year that we call them our annuals, uh, Seeing is Believing, Planet oh. Eccentric, okay. uh, and, you know, the big sellers. Um, we have a publishing division, and they also uh, handle the research because the, even though it says, believe it or not, all the facts are 100% true. Sure. So they have to be uh, authenticated, and uh, uh, we get a lot of submissions, too, from the public, and those have to be checked out. And basically what I get is a script. Uh, every week I get uh, a batch of facts um, ranging anywhere from, you know, 20-something to 40-something facts. Um, I use, I definitely use 22 of them per week because there's four on the Sunday, and there's three each day for the uh, regular daily strip. Sure. So that's 1,144 items per year. Oh, so that's a lot of cartoons. So, like, uh, 
Like, how does uh, Ripley compare to, like, uh, the Guinness World Book of Records, in a way? Well, Guinness is, is very driven by um, stats. Uh-huh. Uh, Ripley's is weird and, uh, and unusual facts. Sometimes they do cross over, though, and you'll be surprised to know that uh, Ripley's publishing all publishes the Guinness Book of World Records. So that that is part of us. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, part of the, the Guinness company. Yeah, so so we do work together, um, but uh, Guinness is, is more about the stats and uh, uh, and things like that, sports and 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 so on. And Ripley's is the shrunken heads and <laughs> and the weird stuff. And uh, but like I, like I said, we do we do cross paths. Quite often, though, with things, certain facts, and that's kind of fun because it's, it's nice to nice to know there's something like like a Ripley's Believe even Guinness World Book of Records that you know, like if you have a, if you're ever wondering what a certain fact is or or how many you know what type of record uh, is being held right now. I mean, you can actually look that up, and they'll probably be able to tell you more or less. Oh yeah, definitely, uh, and it's entertaining. Um, and you know, even back in. Uh, the, the 1930s is when Ripley really was at his peak. In 1936, Robert Ripley was the most famous man in America. He was more famous than the president. Oh, wow. He was getting millions of letters, you know, per month. Uh, people were sending in uh, submissions. Uh, you know, I have a dog that plays the piano and things like that. <laughs> and, uh, and he would draw their stories in his uh, comic strip. Back then they called it a column. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's what they called it in the in the 1930s and uh it's it's still going strong because it's very much driven by the public uh we still do get a lot of uh, submissions from the public you know weird stories and and uh and things and you can go to uh, www.ripleys.com that's our website and even if you have a weird story or or a uh, believe it or not that you think would make a good cartoon or uh, be interesting for one of our books. Um, there's a there's actually a page on there where you can you can log on and, and supply the information, and Ripley's will get in touch with you. So, how many uh, like how many local uh, newspapers and, and magazines uh, actually get your stuff? Well, we're in about 200 newspapers worldwide. It's uh, seen in 42 countries, uh, translated into oh, geez, about. Uh, 16 or so languages <laughs> so it's uh it's still uh, seen in papers quite a bit but mostly our presence is is seen more now on the internet uh -huh. on the web if you go to uh go comics gocomics.com um that's uh, the site that has all the uh the comic strips and you could pick out ripley's believe it or not and you could actually subscribe to it for free. They'll, they'll email it to you uh, on a daily basis uh, for free, which so, is a pretty good deal. Yeah. So, so how long does it take to make an average? Like, a, a, how long does it take to, to do a, a, an illustration and then get to production and then have it be seen around the world the next day? How long does it normally take? Well, I'm about eight, nine weeks ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, and you have to be, because um, the comic strip is distributed by a syndicate, and they uh, they color the dailies, because the, the, you know, comics used to just be white in the newspaper every day, but now a lot of markets want it to be, so the syndicates themselves, they take the black and white comics and they color them there, and that all takes production time. So you want to be, you know, they want you to be like a month ahead, but, but we're two months ahead just to, just to give us more of a buffer. Um, not just drawing continuing stories of characters like Peanuts or something like that. Yeah. The Ripley's, Ripley's strip is, um, is special because it's all um, time-related, uh, sometimes um, historical facts. It's, it's different every day. Oh, sure. And I think that that's one of the, uh, uh, the appealing bit is that, that there's something interesting and different uh, every day you're, you'll be surprised. Oh yeah, I, I would say so, and, and and that's the cool thing about it. It's like it, 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 you just don't know what you're going to expect, and I'm sure that's what you like about your job, especially when you have no idea kind of what you're gonna what you're gonna hear or what you're gonna find out. <laughs> oh yeah, well the challenge is always um, uh, constructing 
the strip and, and picking the facts out to put them together. Because, uh, like I mentioned before, the dailies, uh, we use three facts for the dailies and four facts on the Sunday. Uh-huh. So um, pretty much it's up to me to pick out the ones that, that I think will work well together. And you, know, you try to you try to keep a variety going uh, and keep it interesting. Um, and sometimes some facts aren't as, as uh, interesting as others. So you want to um, feature, um, you know, the more um, appealing facts as a, maybe a larger illustration and so on. Uh-huh. So really it's up. It, they leave it up to the artist to to lay it out and then keep it keep it interesting. Oh, oh okay, which that's, is good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I definitely. like when they leave it up to me. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you got to have some, your input in there too. I mean, you're the one uh, doing all doing the majority of the work. You know, if you're the main guy, you know, I tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, it never used to always be like that. Back in in when Robert Ripley was still alive, R- Ripley himself passed away in 1949. So uh, this has been going on way beyond what Ripley would have imagined. Um, uh, he was in his mid 50s when he passed away in 1949, and at the time he had a staff working for him. Uh, he would lay the the, draw, the panels out, the drawings out. And he actually had staff artists on the strip, too, maybe two or three other um, artists working on it. So now it's just little old me. <laughs> <laughs> but it still feels, I'm sure it feels good that you get a big name, I mean, and that kind of helps pay the bills and stuff and, and gets you, uh, gets you uh, an opportunity, a, a career, pretty much. Well, you know, anytime, um, anytime you're able to uh, do something that you love, it's um, it's not work. Uh-huh. You, you know, Ripley himself said, "I don't have to take a vacation because my job is my vacation. I really love what I do, uh-huh. and that's the best thing about it. When you love what you do, um, you don't feel like it's a job." And there's something it's, there's something that I noticed on Facebook that you're. And this is kind of off the subject because uh, you know, besides uh, the, the stuff with Ripley, you're also a musician as well. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, I always loved music, and it's a nice outlet uh, to be able to uh, perform music out live. Um, is is great. Um, I've been doing that for a long time. We have a a nice sixties tribute band uh-huh. uh, down here in Florida called Sixties Groove, oh. and we cover everything from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and <laughs> Janis Joplin and you know, the fun. You, fun music. You ever cover any Del Shannon tunes at all? Uh, no, we actually do the uh, in my trio. We do the um, Bonnie Raitt version of "Runaway." Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's about that's pretty close. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Well, that's fine. No, I, I think it was kind of cool because I after you accepted my friend request, I kind of I, I kind of look at some of your pictures and I saw you playing guitar and I was, I was like, God, I'm, this is kind of amazing that not only does this guy do animation for Ripley's, but he's also a musician. And it's just like, wow. I mean, killing two birds with one stone. Uh, you know, I applaud you for that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It's, it's all about having a happy life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you know, the bills have to get paid and all and, and yeah. that. But, um... But you you, you got to stay happy. You got to do what you love and uh, and try to be happy. So what's your favorite? And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your favorite type of '60s music? Like what type of artists do you like? Oh, I was always a big fan of the Beatles. In fact, it was probably the Beatles that that got me interested in playing music. You oh, know, wow. uh, uh, the Beatles as far as as but also as songwriters, uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney team, you know, okay. and George Harrison too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I always loved the Beatles, um, probably more than anything. I was always big on, like, Holly. even though I'm only 29, you know, I grew up with, with like, Buddy Holly and some music all the time. Well, like, you hey. know, what's funny is that the Beatles were very influenced by Buddy I love Buddy Holly, too. Uh, he's great. Um, in fact, a friend of mine in New Jersey uh, actually has a Buddy Holly uh, tribute band. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, called Rave On. They play in New Jersey. Uh, and... Uh, we were always big fans of uh, Buddy Holly, the Everly Brothers, yeah, um, and uh, of course, is in there too. There's always Elvis. Yeah, I get a chance to uh, chat with uh, uh, upcoming guest here, uh, Buddy Holly's uh, niece, uh, Sherry Holly. 
here pretty soon. <laughs> oh wow, great! And I'll have to listen to that. And that's gonna be uh, very fun because uh, I've always, like I said, I've always been a big Buddy Holly fan, and it'll be kind of cool to hear some stuff from an actual relative, you know, from somebody that actually knew him a little bit. And they'll learn about his legacy after he died and everything. And yeah, it's cool. <laughs> we always, you know, will forever wonder what. Could have, yep. uh, what might have happened had Bud- Buddy Holly lived, and what kind of music, uh, w- w- what kind of music he would have done, and yep. and uh, you know how, how the decades would have uh, treated him, and so on. It's always going to be a, um, a mystery. Because like uh, the movie, the Buddy Holly story, it was only half right. I mean, not not all of it was correct. I mean, they. Uh, it's funny because they never mentioned about Buddy's older brothers. You know, like Larry and Travis. They were never mentioned mm-hmm. in the movie. Uh, they thought, you know, Buddy was like somebody that fights all the time. He never hit nobody while he was, uh, you know, making music. I mean, he may have been disappointed a few times, but he never, never hurt nobody like they showed in the movie. <laughs> so, so I mean, it was half right, but but uh, there was a lot that was uh, not right either. <laughs> Yeah, that that was a good movie, but then again, you know, Hollywood always has to change it up uh, a little bit too because sometimes they have to they have to add to the story to make it more exciting or whatever they they feel they have to do. But uh, but uh, yeah, they made at least they made an entertaining movie out of it. That's oh, sure. For sure. And like, that was Gary Busey in that, yep, wasn't it? Yeah, and he did all, all the singing, which I was really surprised. <laughs> he did all. Yeah, the singing. he was he was good. He was good. Cause I actually own the soundtrack on CD, and it's a very rare soundtrack. And now it's like hard to find. <laughs> um, th- and they actually made that on the CD. Yep, I have a CD oh. of it. Cool. Yeah, that, and I think La Bamba was more, you know, that was more up up to standards of, than the Buddy Holly story because, but uh, La Bamba was more, I think, more truth telling. You know, as far as uh, the way Richie lived his life. Yeah, there was definitely more conflict uh, shown there. Hey, uh, let me ask you: Wasn't that um, in La Bamba? Was it? Wasn't that Marshall Crenshaw that played Buddy Holly? In, I, I in believe La Bamba? so. Yes, I also have that soundtrack too. <laughs> and yes, it was Marshall Crenshaw. Oh yeah, I, I like Marshall Crenshaw. Great songwriter. They always said that uh, that him and then uh, the other one, uh, Elvis Costello, could have been like a good Buddy Holly impersonator because of the way he looked back oh, in yeah. the day. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But I didn't mean to get off topic. I just thought, you know, since you're a musician, oh, and all that's that, okay. I'm, you know. I'm always, a, you know, <laughs> rock about rock and roll and stuff. And, oh uh, yeah. And, and let's, you know, let's not fail to mention that uh, the Beatles were so influenced by Buddy Holly that the Beatles name actually came from uh, from the Crickets. Uh huh. Yeah. The you also, know, the alternated. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. I know uh, Eddie Deason I mentioned about earlier. See, I interviewed him back uh, in February, and he's a huge Beatles fan. He's, he, he says he's got like over 700 different books that are not related to each other, that are all different books on on the life of the Beatles and stuff. And I'm just like, how the hell? <laughs> well, he's also got some legacy, too, because he was in one of my favorite movies about the Beatles called I Want to Hold Your Hand, yeah. uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Produced back in 1978, uh, and and he's very funny in that movie. Oh yeah, and and, and it just kind of it's just nice because of social media and Facebook and everything bringing everybody together and, and making all these oh, dreams sure. happen. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So so back to the whole Ripley thing. And, uh, what other questions could I ask you about that? Because I, I I I have I don't really write down questions. That's the one thing about me that uh, as an interviewer. I kind of, you know, if I know a lot about you, I'll just kind of improv it, and if I don't know about you, I'll still improv it anyway, because when I write down questions, I sometimes don't get a chance to ask the questions that I don't, and that kind of bothers me a little bit, so I just stop writing down questions and just ask whatever on top of my head. <laughs> well, I can tell you that the uh, the cartoons that, um, that have been published previously... Uh, the last few years, they're available as ebooks now on Amazon.com. Uh, the Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoons. There's six different volumes, and uh, you know if anybody's interested, they're they're available only as as ebooks. Okay, and that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of the work that you've done, like a lot of the drawings yes. and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Th- that, in fact, that is just about all. Um, you know, the last few years worth of uh, of Ripley's cartoons and. Uh, Wow. If anybody 
wants to see them, uh, they are available as ebooks. You know, for years and years, Ripley's cartoons used to be compiled in these little paperback books. Uh-huh. And everybody still asks about them. They're like, oh, whatever happened to the little paperback books? Well, now, you know, you can get them on uh, electronic yeah, uh, form. Yeah, the, the Kindles. <laughs> the Kindles, though. <laughs> Modern technology. Yeah. Modern technology. I still like, you know, holding a book in yep. my hand. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's how it is nowadays. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, it's just it's just kind of weird how technology has really uh, changed the way we do things as people, and, and even with the music industry, and even with the you know the entertainment industry, and I'm sure even like with the way you do stuff. I mean, imagine if you like go back to where you know like back like 20 years ago or even 30 years ago when everything was drawn on paper rather than electronically. Well, here's a, here's a shocker for you: the Ripley's cartoon is still drawn in pen and ink on paper. Oh, okay. But- but the only difference is that uh, it's colored electronically and it's digitized um, after it's drawn. So, in other words, once the, um, the illustration done, I'll scan it and then I'll add the uh, you know the masthead that says Ripley's Believe It or Not on the top. That's yeah. all done electronically. You know, thirty years ago, they used to cut out a, a photostat and glue it to the, and then the artwork was photographed. Uh huh. So, you know that's all that's all gone the way of uh, of the uh, scanned now, and it's done electronically, and it, and the artwork is is more true to what the original looked like from the scanning. You know, because in photography, something gets lost. You know, you're taking a photograph of a drawing, and then it's not as crisp and clear as as if it was electronically scanned. Sure, sure. So all the art right now is done that way. Uh, it's like 600 DPI, so it's crisp and clean. And then it can be uh, it can be blown up or reduced any size and not lose resolution. Oh, wow! Which which is which is a good thing for oh, art work too. Wow, that's pretty cool. Have you won any awards at all for your for your illustrations? Not for uh, any of the Ripley's. Okay. Uh, not for any of the Ripley's yet, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you worked with anybody that's ever ever won like an award for cartoonism or anything like that? Yeah, there, there's the National Cartoonist Society, and they have awards every year. So you, you never know, uh, you know. But there's so many comic strips, <laughs> and there's so many uh, talented folks out there working in the in the comics industry. Yeah, you, know, you just never could tell. You know? So, what does one have to do to qualify or to enter into something like that? I think. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the organization just monitors, uh, you know, the industry and and they vote on it, type of thing. You know, okay. and they they pick nominees. It's pretty much, uh, <laughs> I guess, it's kind of like the Academy Awards. You know, they have like a, yeah. you know, a, a committee that that looks at at the different strips and says, oh, let's nominate so and so this year <laughs> or whatever. Because it's like it's not hard for like Jim Davis to win an award, or when Charles Schultz was around alive, awards for Peanuts or anything like that. Because they're they're such big cart, you know, comic strips and everything. So oh yeah, yeah, and they have one. Ripley's did uh, the Ripley strip did win an award in 1976. Oh okay, just not when you were doing this. <laughs> no, 1976. Let's see, I was graduating eighth grade. Oh wow. <laughs> In 1976, I wasn't even alive yet. Not until September of 1983. <laughs> oh, really? That 83? That's when I. That's when I uh, graduated art school. Oh wow! <laughs> what a conundrum! <laughs> All those years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm only 29. And I'm a young guy, so I I like a lot of old school stuff. And I and I, I Ripley's more like an old school thing because you know they they stick with their tradition. You know they don't like even though they you know you're doing stuff with technology and stuff. But you still keep it old school, as old school as you can, you know. Well, they uh, they um, are uh, uh, pretty modern in terms of uh, their content too. If you ever see any of the Ripley's um, annual books that are sold, uh-huh. uh, they they use, they use mostly photographs. Um, the cartoons are are basically you know relegated to to newspapers and and our online site. But uh, the the books are very modern. Uh, in fact, they're, they're very similar to the Guinness books when you see them. The, they're the same publisher. Oh, huh. So, uh, well, I got a last question to ask you. Know, this this is kind of a big one. This is more or less as personal as I can get, anyway. Uh, what 
kind of what kind of advice would you give to somebody if the young person is just starting out in the uh, uh, illustration industry like you're what you're doing? Try to learn as much as you can. Try to be as versatile as you can. Um, I never thought that I would be uh, categorized as a cartoonist, for example. Uh My, my, uh, my goal was to be as versatile as an illustrator as possible. I just happened to illustrate a cartoon. So I think what I'm trying to say is, you know, like some of these guys that are into art and they're just drawing like manga character, Uh you know, don't get stuck in one thing. I guess basically is the advice I'm saying. Don't get stuck doing one thing and pigeonholing yourself like you're going to be a, a manga animator and that's it. You, because we, you want to learn as much as you can about you know design work and, and everything you can about art. Um, no matter what you use, if you use a, the, the, the pen and ink or you use um, an electronic tablet, just try to learn as much as you can about as, as many different mediums Okay. Well, hey, that's that's uh, that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and definitely uh, start with the basics too. I, I still think that the most important thing is uh, to at least know how to draw and know how to design. Yeah, I know get, what a good de- know what a good design and a good layout right. is as opposed to a bad one. You know. <laughs> yeah, I I can't draw with crap. I still draw stick people. I don't know why. I just. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mentioned Charles Schultz, and I wanted to tell you that yeah. the very first time Charles Schultz was ever published was in a Ripley's cartoon. Oh, wow. How many people he know that? He sent in a cartoon <laughs> about his dog that ate uh, tacks and pins and things. Uh-huh. That dog was the the inspiration for Snoopy. Uh-huh. That was oh. Charles Schultz's dog. And this is an uh, actual Ripley's fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he actually sent in, and and Ripley published his little drawing just as he did it because he was, uh, you know, he was just a kid at the time. Yeah. And, uh, so it's kind of a cool story. There's his little picture. It said drawn by Sparky because that was uh, Sparky was Charles Schultz's nickname. Oh wow. Kid. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, and, and that's probably what got kind of got the ball rolling for him maybe afterwards. Well, he was always interested in art. Yeah. That was 1937. Jeez. That was 1937 when he sent that into Ripley. Wow. So, pretty cool. <laughs> well, John, I that tell you what. Cool <laughs> I, I tell you what, John, I appreciate uh, having you on. Uh, this has been a, a rare treat because I think you're the first actual cartoonist or animator that I've ever had a chance to talk to. So, this is a true, a very, very cool honor to talk to you. Well, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure, Frankie. <laughs> Thank you uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity. Yeah, and thanks for just being an icon of pop culture. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> I keep playing the music, man. Maybe one day we'll make a YouTube video or something and because uh, I'd love to hear hear you play. I'm, I'm sure you play pretty good. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. I try I try to Try to be as good as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see a CD out someday, huh? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you have a good one. Thank you, Frankie. Yeah. You too. Bye. Take care. And that was John. Let me get this last name here again. John Graziano. Or Gra- Graziano. There we go. Before I butcher his name. Who's an illustrator from uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this interview. It's a very rare treat because of the fact that, uh, you know, somebody that actually works, uh, well, somebody that actually works for Ripley's you know, Entertainment and everything. I think that's, uh, I think that's very cool. Very cool, the fact that we can do that. So, or that uh, I can talk to somebody from that. First time ever uh, talking to an actual illustrator. So, very, very cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and uh, stay tuned because we got some more legendary people to talk to and some real true pioneers of uh, uh, our two icons of pop culture as the series continues throughout summer. Bye-bye. <laughs>